Hi and welcome to Phoenix TV, the TV show that follows Manchester's fastest and most exciting sports team, the Manchester Phoenix. On this week's show we have player interviews and match highlights, but we're going to start as always with my good friend Tambo and the Hockey News. How's it going my friend? Yes, it's going to be a long day today. <laughs> Any, any particular reason? Uh, we'll start off with congratulations to Richard and Yolanda. Yeah, absolutely. On their wedding day yesterday. It was a good day, wasn't it? It wasn't too bad. It was it was a pretty good uh, day. I've not got matchsticks in my eyes. I've got girders. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, there was even a, uh, a hockey toast in there, but we oh, can't repeat that, can we? On No, not on Phoenix TV, no. No, but it, it, it was to, to celebrate the, the Sheffield Steelers. Honest. Right. OK, here we go. Bit of news first. Doug Shepard, he's re-signed for another year in Bisonland. James Ferrara and Will Weldon have re-signed for the Phantoms from next year. Nothing about Luke Ferrara yet. I think he might be heading to the Elite League, that boy. Milkins Lighting Chairman Vito Rausa says MK have no intention of going to the Elite League after the rink renovation. He doesn't agree with the number of imports in the Elite League, so looks like we've got Milton Keynes and a nice shiny new barn in a couple of years. On to the weekend games. Phoenix played the Steel Dogs on Friday. We'll talk about that in a minute. Telford Tigers 5, Bratton Bees 2. I bet the Tigers wish they'd started this form at Christmas. They might have had a real go at the playoffs. They're playing really well at the moment. Comfortable win, the goals from Karpov, Yannick, Brittle, and two more for Scott McKenzie. It must be the, the water over there. <laughs> Strachek and Galazzi scored for the Bees. Swindon 3, Guildford 5. Swindon are struggling at the moment. Might be our playoff opponents later, we'll talk about that. They went two down early in the first week from Savage and Cohut. They replied with three of their own from, who else? Aaron Nell, Betridge and Perkio. Leading 3-2 at the end of the second. Flames up the tempo in the third and run away with it. Campbell, Lydiard and a second one from Cohut gave them an easy win. Milton Keynes won Slough Jets, three. That's a rehearsal for next week's playoff quarter-final. And uh, the Jets took the honours. Goals from Bakalik, Tawalski and Pluskowskis. Lightning's goal came from Lee Jameson. Seems to be the only one getting the goals down there at the moment. That just leaves Sheffield Steel Dogs at six, Manchester Phoenix seven after overtime. Well, didn't make it. Now they beat with a, another engagement down in rural snow ridden Stoke. But Tommy Duggan, five goals. What a performance from them, including the winner in overtime. Barry McKenzie and Joachim Flatting got our other goals. We had a 4 0 lead after two periods and we're leading 6-3 with nine minutes to go. And Ben Morgan got himself a match penalty, and you thought, yeah, that's that done and dusted. Not with the dogs, it wasn't. They scored three goals leading up to the end, took it to overtime, and then Tom got his fifth with nine seconds left to give us the points. Pete, we weren't there, but it's maybe just as well. My old heart wouldn't have taken that one. Yeah, so, I mean, I remember checking the scores on uh, Twitter and, and Facebook, and yeah, 4-0 at the end of the second. You're thinking, game in the bag. Ben Morgan gets himself a, a nice hot shower early. And again, you think, one of the best defensemen, job done, put your feet up. And obviously they come flying back and yeah, and, and taking it to overtime. So, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a weird one. I think most of us expected to just be physical and a, a bit of a brawl from the, uh, the PR coming out of, uh, of Sheffield. Um, but yeah, it just shows, again, in this league, you, you can't take an unlikely regardless of any time of the season. It always is, and really, Sheffield. They did it to us in the playoffs last time, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. Right, we're going to look at the league table. Right, this will be it. Really, last weekend, this weekend, we've got Guildford, 79 points. Basin's Hook, 72. We're third with 69. Milton Keynes, 66. These places are hard and fast. Slough, also, 62 points, can't be caught in fifth. Swindon have 53, Bracknell have 51, Peterborough have 49. That finishes the playoff places. Sheffield with 44 and Telford with 26. They're on the golf course tomorrow morning. That gives us playoff quarterfinals looking a bit like this. Guildford will play Peterborough. Beijing Soap will play Swindon or Bracknell. We will play Swindon or Bracknell. And Milton Keynes will play Slough. All depends on tonight's results. Swindon and Guildford need a point to finish in sixth place, which means we will play them. If Swindon lose and Bracknell win, we're going to Bracknell next Saturday. Which one would you prefer, Pete? It's a tough one, isn't it? I mean, Swindon, you know they can score goals, and then depending on who turns up on the night, it's whether they can kind of stop the goals going in the net or not. 
Um, Bracknell again, a bit hit and miss. You can play them one night and they'll bang a load in, and the next night they won't be able to, to score at all. And you know, again, defence is a bit of a weak point for them at times. So, so I'm just they, wondering if they'll actually pick and choose their games. Brown, I think they'd be fair. All the way up to Manchester, whom we've lost five times, or a nice easy one down the road at Basingstoke. Well, again, that's going to might play into it the the travel as well. So it's, it's going to be interesting. I mean, obviously tonight for Phoenix, win or lose, we've got third, and now we've got injuries. So we might all be looking down at the uh, the two games between that Swindon and Bracknell are playing, and maybe see who we're going to end up playing next week. Personally, I don't care. After tonight, with four games left, if we win all four games, we're playoff champions. Oh yeah, we went on a couple like six, seven, and eight game streaks earlier on. So yeah, four games and that, and yeah, you've got a nice piece of silverware. So you know, if anyone can do it, we can. Yeah, tonight's game. We see we're a bit short again tonight. James Archer's not very well again. Yeah, Possible's still not well, but uh, certain goalie possibly making his reappearance tonight. Yeah, I mean, saw so Yasik walk in um, in his civvies, and he's not down on the actual team sheet. So it looks like. Obviously, Mr. Phone, who was on the bench last week, potentially could get some action tonight. He needs a bit of a game. Maybe not the full game, but he needs a bit of a game to get, get his game head on for next week. Well, exactly. Get a bit of the rust off. He's had a bit of time off. And that, and hopefully get him in, uh, in fighting form and uh, ready for next week. Right, well, I think that wraps about what we got here, but we've got a special guest on later on tonight. Is, is this someone we're going to enjoy talking to? I think we well enjoy talking to her, yes. Well, I actually got to chat to this person the other night at Rich and Yolanda's wedding, and I've got to say I was a bit disappointed because now I know who this person is. They're going to be a bit human, so I can't feel... I'm going to feel really guilty when I give them abuse for calling things wrong, and that's probably the only kind of sort of hint we're going to give them, I think. OK, right. <laughs> Shall we? Over to you, my good friend. Let's go watch some hockey. Finds hand, and now it's Michael Cerny. On the left-hand side, Hand in the slot, shoots, good stop by Ryan, may have grazed the post as well on its way through. Hand plays it out front, and this time Michael Cerny does score. Well, the Tigers were at sixes and sevens in their own zone. Hand went one way, played the puck the other, and Michael Cerny fires it in for a 42nd league goal of the season. The Phoenix have struck first, it's Manchester 1, Telford nil. McKenzie spins his man around, Chong nicely threads it through into the zone, comes Duggan, cuts to the middle, the shot though went down into the corner, Duggan's worked it back to the blue line and Boothroyd finds the hand on those inside edges, gets the pass across to Michael Cerny who fires it in front and Bentham couldn't quite control it, Tigers did not pick him up at all, Schnabel big shot from the line and Ryan well out of the crease, gets the glove on it and holds on, into the corner Schnabel got there and that puck's gone into the net and out of play as Schnabel and Priest will square up behind the goal turns and plays it off the boards for Daniel Croft Selwood it is that will dump around the boards phone has almost lost that one came diving out from the Tigers tried to play it near side now they go for the sharp angle and they score well, it was the funny bounce off the boards that did for the Manchester Phoenix. They never really recovered. And Steve Fogg thought he was tight on the post, but Tom Saw banks it in. And we're all tied up. It's Phoenix 1, Tigers 1. McKenzie works it back to Neil. Duggan backhands it through. It breaks. In comes Barry McKenzie. He shoots. Good save by Ryan. The rebound cleared away by Telford. Gains the red line and then fires it. A nice pass across ice to Ryan Selwood. It breaks through. Shot from Taylor. Good save by Foe. He shovels the puck down into the corner. Duggan up the boards. Burrows trying to chip it past Michael Cerny. You've got just a piece of it. And Boothroyd finds Cerny on the hash marks. Flatten. Winds and shoots. That was deflected. And Ryan finds the loose puck as Duggan went to try and get a hold of it. Right, Phoenix TV here, and we're here with tonight's match night sponsor, Howard from uh, Kingfisher. Kingfisher. Yeah, it's good to see you again, Howard. How's things? It's great, Tambo. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, it's a great atmosphere tonight, isn't it? Yeah, it's really lively. Yeah, well, we've, we've, we've had the crowds have picked up. They always do in this month, and it's good to see a nearly full house, and it's a good entertaining game. Oh, yeah, it's uh, pretty tight, isn't it, with the, uh, well, one apiece, but uh, I think we'll come good. We usually do, don't we? And how are things going with you and the business end? Going okay? 
Going very well, thank you. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, been a, a good start to the year and uh, things are looking well. Yeah, really good. Howard, always great to see you here. Hope to see you again next season. Thank you very much. Will do. Thanks, Sambo. He's dropped as there's chaos on the back row block 11. Back door looking for the tap in was hand. Ryan managed to find the loose puck. Now he tries to bank it in off the goalie. But Ryan goes down and covers it up. Oh, phone it gets piece. And it's Ben Wood who tried to carry out front, given away as all the players fall over in front. Across comes Luke Boothroy, backhands it to the blue line. It's kept in by Janik who played it down low. That's a good glove save. Ryan saw what it was that got the tip in, but Steve Fone coming across with the glove. Making the stop. Sean's down there in the corner. McKenzie's there as well. The puck breaks and away come the Tigers down the right hand side. Carp off through it towards the net. It was paddled away by the stick handle through by Yaroslav Prusik. But the Phoenix step up at centre ice. McKinney gains the zone. Dickinson fires it cross ice. Bentham picks it up off the boards. Goes towards the back door. And what a save. And it is bundled in. Well, Jared Dickinson was denied what seemed to be a certain goal by Deck Ryan diving across, but he's managed to bundle it in at the second time of asking. It's a first Manchester Phoenix goal for Jared Dickinson, and the Phoenix retake the lead. It's Manchester 2, Telford 1. Drops it back, Neil's pass has been intercepted. Played out towards the front, it's knocked away. Shot comes off the crossbar and bounces out. Scott McKenzie thought he'd scored but it was crossbar down and out. Flapping through to flap towards hand at the back door, the tip goes down into the opposite corner. Flapping's in there, hand trying to come out. Cerny is in front, goes backhand and scores. Really nicely cycled around by the Phoenix, every player involved. It was the pass to Michael Cerny who goes backhand at the near post to beat Deck Ryan. Second of the game and 43rd of the season for Michael Cerny. The Phoenix lead by three goals to one. Chips down in behind the goal. McKenzie gets bumped by James Priest. Duggan. Turning away from your eyes, Senko in front, and Liam Chong finds the top corner. Well, the Phoenix have got rolling now. It's Liam Chong who lofts the puck high over the shoulder of Declan Ryan into the top corner. And just like that, it's a three goal lead. Liam Chong has six on the year, and the Phoenix lead 4 1. Look to drive it into the zone. Karpov shoots and Foam will hold on to that one. In fact, no, he drops it. He drops it. Marvin needs to turn the music off because Foney's just fooled everybody. Phoenix TV, I've got that special guest I uh, was telling you about at the beginning of the programme. I'm here with uh, Joy Talkman, one of the best referees in the league. But what I really want to talk about, Joy, you got a little bit of a trip next week, haven't you? Yes, I have, yeah. On Sunday, Easter Sunday, I'm off to uh, Ottawa for the Women's World Championships. Hey, that's not a bad gig, is it? Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. I've been uh, lucky this year. I've had two international tournaments. I was in Germany in February for the Olympic qualification round, and then I've got the World Championships again this year. So, yeah, pretty lucky. It'll be me wanting your autograph instead of you wanting mine this week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, I'm sure we're the, the kind of unsung heroes, aren't we, going around the world and... Uh, all expenses paid trip and referee in. <laughs> yeah, but isn't, isn't it good to, for, for the British game to be to be so highly thought of at, at the top of the tree? The, the, you know, the best competition 
sort of in hockey, really. Yeah, it's great. Um, Women's World Championships for the last few years has had. I, I've been there for for the last few years. We've also had a linesman there, Alice Stanley, um, until she retired last year, and that's just a great. Um, a, a great commendation really from the International Federation that our officiating program is strong enough to have women at that top level and we have around I think it's about 11 this year international assignments for the male officials as well um, which for such a small country that's not a huge hockey nation um, says that our officiating is not too bad despite what the fans might think. <laughs> Are we attracting new people because we've I mean the likes of the likes of Clouts and Matty Thompson they're not getting any younger these two are they? Yeah I mean I, I'm pretty sure they'll be around for, for a while longer um, and it's great to have them to, to kind of look up to and to talk to when you're having problems. Um, we have started to see uh, a lot of younger officials coming through, those, those uh, players that are coming maybe to the end of uh, being able to play competitively and wondering they want to stay involved in the game and staying on. The four-man system this year has enabled some younger officials to step up and take the armbands with, with the kind of safety net of having another referee there to call penalties. So I think there is, there is a kind of route through, but I think what fans and players need to appreciate is if you don't have enough officials, there wouldn't be a game. Um, so a week in, week out does get a bit tiring, and especially if you're a younger official, it's, it's pretty hard to, to put yourself out there. It certainly is. Let's hope they keep on coming through. Joy, have a great tournament out there. We'll all be looking out for you. Catch you on the web somewhere and uh, have a safe journey. And thanks for coming. Thanks very much. Thanks very much to Manchester for having me again. <laughs>
Phoenix will look to break as it's fired rink wide. Chong will look to skate onto it. Duggan goes towards the net and the tip comes off the outside of the goal. Thomas had his stick tied up by Sori. Gets it back to Schnabel at the line. Plays it across. Neil in. Shoots. Good save by Ryan and the rebound bounces into the corner. Saw can't get it clear. Schnabel across to Neil. This time he finds hand at the near post. And now Michael Cerny at the hash marks. Neil goes to the front of the net as hand gets the pass. Gets it out of his feet, he goes cross ice, and Schnabel walking in, shoots Ryan Pat save. Chips up off the boards and away come the Phoenix. Down the right hand side is Tom Duggan. Duggan waits, McKenzie bouncing puck. Ryan saw it late but makes the save and covers it up. He gets it up onto the wing of Caprice. And now Bowley carries ahead as Phoenix are back at full strength. Rose came in and he's knocked it past phone. It's off the line, but the goal is given. Phone came out to play the puck, but he didn't get there. And Danny Rose has knocked it into the open goal. We have a minute and 41 to go, and Telford have taken the lead for the first time. It's Manchester 4, Telford 5. It's out front, Karpov looking to spring Scott McKenzie, who's in behind the deep. Goes down, and there will be a penalty called as Boothrow touches the puck. It's a penalty shot. McKenzie and Boothroyd were there as Scott McKenzie broke through and Joy Topman has awarded a penalty shot with 35 seconds left. This could be the icing on the cake for Telford. Here we go then, Scott McKenzie against Steve Fone. McKenzie moves out right hand side. Deeks and Fone squeezes the pads together and the Phoenix are still alive. feet of Yaroslav Kruzik, hand is off the bench, comes out front, sharp angle comes off, Ryan bounces away, Cerny's backhander won't go, the Tigers have cleared it away, and the Telford Tigers with a remarkable third period comeback, three goals in 39 seconds and a late winner from Danny Rose means that the Tigers get the last word on the regular season, the final score here tonight at the Ice Dome, not the preparation the Phoenix would have wanted for the playoffs. It's finished Manchester 4, Telford 5. Final score tonight, Manchester Phoenix 4, Telford Tigers 5. I'm here with uh, Telford coach Tom Hawkins. Tom, surprised? I'm not sure what just happened. We come in 4-1 going into third period and we walk out with a 5-4 victory, so um, very surprised. Um, we, we came out with a bit of a plan to try and put a bit more pressure on guys. Um, I think the turning point for us was an early goal in the period. It got our tails up, we kind of grabbed that momentum back and uh, I thought we played uh, pretty smart through the third period. We didn't give up many opportunities and to come out, like I say, with a victory was fantastic for the players. Well, talking about momentum, you've... It's come just a wee bit too late, but uh, there's lots of factors been with your, with your guys this year, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been a long season. It's been a tough season, and everybody knows about the ice rink. And uh, we've struggled with some uh, some import departures and player departures. We've struggled with mumps. Um, since we've had a settled team from January onwards, I think we've been we've been very strong. You know, the additions of Scott McKenzie, Senko, and obviously Karpov came at the right time for us. Declan came back into form after after being hit with the mumps. And, there's been a lot of positives after, after Christmas to a lot of our players. Young team, but they've, they've, they've played above themselves this last couple of weeks and uh, we, we're pretty 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 upset really that we're out of this right now and not going into playoff next week. And they'll have a good summer, they'll have a happy summer and come back ready to go? I hope so, I'd like to sign majority of the team if we can and try to add to it in the right places. We've got a lot of good players, we've got a lot of good young players who, who we've worked with for the last three seasons. Um, and if we can get this, the right signatures on paper, you know what? We'll never say never and we'll, we're never out of it. Um, and I think we're young guys, in, they never really know when they are out of it. So it was great to see. They skated well. Uh, I thought Manchester were, were very good through the first two periods and I really thought we weren't going out of here with anything. So I'm as probably shocked as everybody tonight. And a good Telford crowd as always, don't you? Great travelling fans today. Um, it, it was really good payback for them at the end of the end of this season. Really, it has been tough for them as as it has for the players. And you know, they they, they bleed when we bleed, and they they hurt when we lose as well. So to be able to pay them back with what six or seven victories over the last couple of months has been fantastic for them. It's great to see so many of them travel up here and support the team in bad weather. Well, have a good summer, Tom, and I'm probably see you at Coventry anyway. But uh, have a great summer, and uh, we'll see you next season. Thanks very much. All the best.
Hi, right, Phoenix TV here. Final score tonight: Manchester Phoenix four, Telford Tigers five. I'm here with uh, Tom Duggan, one of our assistant uh, captains. Tom, a bit disappointing. Yeah, we're we're not very happy with that uh, that that third period. Obviously, to let to let them back in the game. Um, no excuses. That's, that's not good enough. We can't be doing that. Uh, the only thing to take out of it is that uh, you know lesson learned, and we've got six periods. It's a it's a two leg game next weekend, so. We won't be doing that next weekend. Well, this is the thing. I mean, the season's over now. The season starts again next Saturday. That's it. I mean, you've got four big games to win a trophy. So uh, we know if we bring our A game and uh, everyone gets behind us, we can, we can more than, we're more than capable of doing that. So uh, we're looking forward to next weekend, a bit, of, a bit of redemption, redeem ourselves for that third period and get, get us, get us to, to Coventry with a chance of winning a trophy. See, we really looked very good first two periods. A lot of good, good crisp hockey, and uh, in control. And but that's hockey; it happens. It does. I mean, you look a couple of bad bounces, and like I said, we have no excuses. But we were in control of the game, and we should have stayed in control of the game. That's the that's the uh, top and bottom of it. So, as I said, lesson learned. So moving on, according to my stats, it's Bracknell next week. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think uh, it was either Bracknell or Swindon, and we're not too fast either way. Um, and yeah, we're just we're looking forward to going down there. I think we go down there first, don't we, on the Saturday? Yeah, so we'll be down yeah. there. Um, we've played we've played well down there, um, and we just need to execute the, the things that that we'll work on in practice. So we're looking forward to it. Like I said, a little bit of redemption and, and get ourselves to Coventry. Right, I know you know, I'm going to annoy you with this one because I know I'm always on about uh, you're always on about teamwork and things like that. But I've got to say something about your personal performance on Friday evening. Yeah, it was a, it was a nice one. Um, puck was going in for me so you got to make the most of that and it's nice nice like I say nice nice to get the two points and to be a big part of that uh, it's, it's always it's always nice I've, I've not I've not found the net as much as I would have liked this this year but it's been that's just been the way it, it goes so Friday was the opposite <laughs> so hopefully I can do that in, in the next four games too I'm not promising 20 goals but you know it'll be nice to put the puck in the back of the net just give us the effort you always give us Tom really oh, yeah that's all you can do is and 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 like you said, I, I didn't get to those positions to get the goals without the guys that were on the ice giving me the puck and making the plays. So th there's a lot that goes on. So, you know, full credit to my teammates. Right. Well, best of luck for next Saturday. I think we're taking a fair old few down again, as always. And uh, let's hope uh, we get uh, everybody gets to Coventry. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's our goal. And like you say, we always take a, a good group of fans down there and they're always cheering us home and away. And, you know, the fans here in Manchester are great. So... Uh, it's appreciated and uh, we've got four more games in us and four more wins hopefully thanks very much Tom cheers Tambo ok right it's uh, post game show time and I'm here as usual with the boss Neil hi Neil hi how are you and doing and we brought uh, young Mr Liam Chong up to have a wee chat with us evening Liam evening how are you doing I'm doing fine right let's, let's get the bad bit out of the way first disappointing result good first couple of periods Things didn't go well for us in the third. What do you think? What are your thoughts? I think the uh, first two periods we controlled the game. As you see, we went four-one up, and I think we just again took our foot off the pedal like we did in Sheffield, and this time it bit us as opposed to winning. So heads up now and just focus on the playoffs ahead. Well, actually, I mean, we always say the season is finished. It starts again next Saturday. It's, it's a whole new ball game. You've got six periods of hockey to get yourself to Coventry. Mm, definitely. I mean, the season's over. Playoffs. In, like, in any sport is completely different to the regular season it's a lot more important the hockey's a lot more intense people want it a lot more and I think out of all the three trophies there are I think this is one everyone wants to win you agree with that one Neil it's, uh, well we want to win all the trophies but this is the one that we've got left we're four games away from picking up the silverware yeah, I, I think I think one of the problems at the moment is, um, you know, I was just showing some of the guys downstairs. Liam was listening to the conversation about about tonight and about about Friday with Sheffield. Um, it, it is tough when, and you know what, we've been doing this all season. Even I'm sick of it now. But it's tough when you've not got the lines running as they should do, and it's like no Archer again tonight, no Posyville. So we're changing defence around, we're changing forwards around, we're changing the lines around. And I think what the guys were saying is is they, they put so much effort and impulse into the line changes for the first couple of periods that they were dynamic and controlling the ice. And when they thought they got on top of the game, everybody was starting to run out of steam and actually took the foot off the gas. And unfortunately, the other team came at us very, very quick. 
um, and scored some very, very quick goals on us. And that, that's probably what happened, is it, Liam? Yeah, I agree. I think uh, they came out fast at the beginning of the third period and we just weren't ready. As you could see, three goals, I think it was about a minute and 45 seconds and we just didn't really get our head, heads around it. So I think we just need to be mentally more tough and bring that towards the playoffs. I'd agree. And so, so going on from that, Jim, I think the point is is, is we need we need the squad back. You know, we've, we've got a couple of boys tonight. I mean, you've not been particularly well during the week, have you, kid? No, I think there's a bug going around. I mean, Andre's ill. A few of the other boys, you get tight chest out there. So you're running short bench. When you've got ill players at the same time, it makes it twice as hard. You know, our, our thing really, Jim, is, is, is if we can have our full squad back for the playoffs, which which we're hoping we will. I mean, that's Stevie's first game back. You've got to you've got to give him a break as well. I mean, it, you know, it, it's tough coming back for your first game back and having him come at you that quick. And, you know, it, it's a difficult one. But if we can have a good week at training, we can maybe get over the bugs. We can get the full squad back. As Liam's just said, totally different next week. We start again and with a full squad, things could be totally different for us. So positively, I think we'll be OK. What do you think, Liam? Well, we haven't had a full squad now for, I think, 10, 15 games. So I think once we get the full squad back, it'll be completely different again. It's like the beginning of the season, so hopefully. I can have it worse than that for you. Phony's been out for, is it 12 and a half weeks? 12, yeah. Yeah. 12 and a half weeks, that <laughs> says it all really, doesn't it? So you've had no number one keeper for 12 and a half weeks, never mind the defence right. you've had missing and the forwards. So I think having a full squad and a, a good week of training should put you in good stead. What do you think? Definitely. I think if we go hard this week, everyone eats right, trains properly and prepares just straight, straight for the weekend, I think we'll be fine. And they will, Jim, to be fair. I mean, the lads downstairs have all got their heads down. It's like they're not happy with tonight's performance. It's, you know, I've, I know the fans are saying it's a nothing game and it hasn't altered our position in the league. But, you know, we all want to win. And at the end of the day, we wanted to win our last game at home, didn't we, Liam? Definitely. I mean, it's always good to have a win leading into the playoffs. Uh, we plan to win. Then again, we've also won already eight out of the last nine. So I think if we won today, it'll be nine out of ten. And that's a cracking performance like to go towards the playoffs I think and it's all about confidence Jim you know that of course it was good to see Stevie back tonight but I think the whole rink wins we went for that first butterfly save there full stretch on the ground we thought then he got back out I think everyone was so relieved mm. yeah he's been out for 12 weeks and he's been working really really hard to get back into shape but then he's only been on the ice I think for like two weeks now so you can't really expect a lot from him and I think he played well I mean he made some really important saves at some point he let in some soft goals but I mean that's going to be expected when you've been out for 12 weeks haven't played come in cold so he needed that game tonight to get his game head on for next week though it was very important to put, to put him in and as you say they don't let people down these, these things happen you've just got to play through them and get on with it you yourself took you a couple of games to get to get your sea legs really didn't it yeah definitely like I say I was out for eight months and I came in in January it was hard I found the first five to eight games probably really difficult to get my fitness back and just get into the swing of things now I feel like I'm back in the swing of things starting to play better now so oh you certainly are I think really Neil on to next week it's Bracknell if I'm looking at my my cards right I think Bracknell's got the better head-to-head -head over Swindon so I thought Bracknell might have wanted a Beijing Stoke in a local derby, but as you say, it doesn't matter who it is, we've got to beat them to get to Coventry. It won't matter who it is, to be honest, Jim, and Liam will tell you this, and you know, we've seen this year, depending which Bracknell team you play, and they'll want to go to the playoffs just like they did last year. If I'm not mistaken, it's not Bracknell disposed of Milton Keynes or something last year, a big no. upset or something in the end, somebody did, because Milton Keynes weren't there, were they? Nah, but it wasn't Bracknell, Bracknell haven't been there for a wee while, they're determined to get there, but uh, you know, the rest of them can do what they like, we're just looking after ourselves, I think. Yeah, regardless of who it is, Bracknell or Swindon, I think we're fully capable of beating either of them. We've had played them recently. I think we've beaten them both quite a lot. We've beaten quite convincingly, I think, Bracknell. So I think we've got a record against Bracknell. I personally would rather have Bracknell. And the good news, Jim, to finish on is uh, we've not seen the best of Liam Chong yet, have we? No. <laughs> and that's, that's all to come, really. And at the end of the day... Let's, uh, let's hope, Liam, that we've got you here next season so you can build on actually your fitness and what you've done for us. And, uh, you know, let, let's see the best of Liam, eh? Definitely, yeah. I think I need, a, I need a good summer's rest. I mean, I came in and my wrist wasn't 100% like right when I came in, but I think another full summer's rest and it should be back to normal. Well, that's where we open. Right, next Sunday, 5.30. It's the quarter-final second leg. You really want to be there. There'll be another big crowd. Let's cheer the guys on to Coventry. So make sure you're there. 5.30 start next Sunday evening. See you there. Well, unfortunately, that's all the time we've got on Phoenix TV this week. But don't forget, if there's any questions you want answering, you can submit them via the usual ways, by text, by email, and, of course, the official Phoenix Forum. 
Now, keep up to date with everything that's going on in the world of the Phoenix by checking out the Facebook page, Twitter account, and of course, the official Phoenix website. And for something a little quirkier, why not check out the official Phoenix podcast? Now, next week, we're playing somebody. We're not sure yet. Craig's just about to run in and try and pull funny faces and put me off. But it doesn't work because I'm a professional. Um, but yeah, we're playing somebody next week. It's either Swindon or Bracknell, but we're not too sure. All we know is that it is going to be on Sunday at half past five. And hopefully Craig won't be trying to tickle my leg. So from me and everyone here at the rink, while we go and kill Craig, we'll see you next week.